The last man to win the uh, well, well, win a Grand Slam tournament from Italy did it 45 years ago. Now Italy have a man. The first time an Italian man or woman is making a Grand Slam, uh, a Wimbledon final, beg your pardon. 25-year-old Matteo Berrettini. And the only thing standing in his way is a chap called Novak Djokovic, who is looking to really stamp his class on the field once again. Djokovic has a world tennis by the throat right now. He can't do anything wrong. He's odds on to win. But, you know, Sunday could be a day of upsets. Although if Sunday's a day of upsets, it means that England will win the final because they're the smaller team. But I'll leave it there for now. Track and field is what we're talking about because the Olympic 400 meters champion, Sean Emilio Weibo from the Bahamas, beat reigning world 100 meters champion, Shelly and Fraser Price over 200 meters at Friday's IWF Diamond League meet in Monaco. Miller Weibo raced to 22.23 seconds with Fraser Price third in 22.48. Jamaica's Shanika Ricketts logged the only other win by an athlete from the English-speaking Caribbean, taking the triple jump with a best leap of, well, with a leap of 14.29 meters in the final round. Around jump off. Important to say that. Senior writer at Sportsmax.tv and our resident track and field expert, Leighton Levy, joins us today. Welcome to the program, Leighton. Good to see you once again. Hold on, George. Nice shirt. Uh, you, you really think so? <laughs> I don't believe so. <laughs> All right. I, I'm gonna, when I leave here, I'm going to pass by your house. I'll give it to y your missus and she can give it to you as a gift because I don't really want it after today. I'm just contractually obliged to wear it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Leighton, Miller Weibo bested Fraser Price at 200 meters today in a fair time. Uh, she, she wasn't pulling trees way short of her personal best, uh, of course. But how did she look to you? And what, if anything, can we or should we read from today's head to head? Not much. I think Shawnee and um, Shelley are two different places in their preparation for the Olympics. Shawnee is coming off an injury, so she needs races. She's going to be racing as much as she can um, to get to a point where she'll be competitive in Tokyo. Shelly has races, but her races are for different purposes. Her races right now are for basic preparation. In terms of, when you look at what Shelly and Fraser Price did today, it, it becomes increasingly clear that she is in you know, what some coaches call a microcycle. She's already hit a peak at the national championships two weeks ago. She's now in a smaller microcycle of training intensity to then start to taper off for the Olympic Games where she'll be at her best, at her fastest. Um, so that, that's the basic difference about where you are. When you saw Shelly and Fraser Price come off the curve today, along with Mari, who was at Talu, and they were at 150, they were both battling. And of course, Shauna uses her 400 meter basic strength to come by both of them. You also saw Shelly and Fraser Price literally give up the ghost because I think she just ran out of gas because her legs are heavy from, from that microcycle of hard, intense training as, you know, as it approaches the Olympic Games. You know, she didn't have much left in her legs. So that explains her, her she literally backed off because she just didn't have the energy to, to push to the line. Shawnee is in need of racing, so she's going to be racing at her best. So it's it's hard to tell um, where either athlete is at right now, but it's clearer where Shelly and Fraser Price is as opposed to Shawnee because that 22-23 today is still slower than the time that she ran uh, just about just under a week ago on Tuesday in Hungary when she ran 22-15 to lose to Sherika Jackson. So it's it's there are different stages of their of their preparation, and um, I think both will be happy generally by what by, by what the outcome was today. Just just a, a, to tag a, a Sean Emilio question, Miller Weaver question on on the point you're making about her. So she is sub forty nine for four hundred meters, sub twenty two. I'm talking personal best, sub twenty two for two hundred meters, and of course sub eleven for one hundred meters. There was a time when. Uh, track and field pundits would tell you that she has no rival for the tag of best women's combination sprinter. Uh, mm -hmm. With Sharika Jackson's fantastic improvement in, in, in relatively short time, is that status of Miller Weaver being the queen of the combination sprinters? Is that under threat, you think? Um, based on the math, if I remember correctly, I think Sharika is ahead of her now, having run 1077, yes. 2182. So her, her personal best at, at 100 is fast because Shawnee Miller's is what, 1098? 1098, 1098. There you go. Exactly. Her personal best is 2174 and of course, 4837. 
I think I, I, I don't know, but they're, they're very close. Yeah. Let's, let's put it that way, in terms of where they are in terms of the a combination of sprinters. And I suspect that um, depending on what Sherika does at, at the Olympic Games, she could actually surpass Shawnee because there's a belief. In fact, there's word on the ground which I have now come to have give more credence based on what I heard before the national championships that she's going to run even faster at the Olympics than she did at the national championships. So by then, I think she may have, may, in terms of the, the points accumulated, she will be ahead of Shawnee as best Caribbean combination sprinter. Yeah, I know, I know some track and field heads who don't, who don't like what the Diamond League is doing with the, with the, with the jumps. And, you know, Shanika Ricketts won today. Tajay Gale lost. For those of our viewers who didn't see either event, tell, well, tell us what happened with Shanika Ricketts first in that jump off. All right, so in the, in the triple jump, Shanika Ricketts jumped 40 meters 75 and then was surpassed by Yulimar Ruas, who jumped 50 meters 12. Uh, Mamona uh, jumped uh, 14.66 for the national record and um, and, uh, and personal best for the top three who then advanced to the final jump off. In the final jump off, Shanika jumped 14.29 while Rojas and Mamoa, Mamona both fouled their jumps, which means that Shanika wins um, that competition despite having jumped 15.12 in what is now a preliminary round of the long jump. Uh, and so it, it, it's the it's controversial final three rule that I think is ridiculous because here we, because here we have somebody who's jumping 15-12 and then losing a competition. It, it makes no sense. Similarly, Tajay Gill goes into the, to the long jump final jump off with the best jump of 8 meters 29, which is a season best for him. Of course, 10-2 blue jumps 8-21. But, 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 but late, late, before, you go, before you go even further, before Mariah comes in, what are the organizers trying to cure? Because it's not clear to me what you're trying to fix by, by, by meddling and, 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 and interfering with what was a pretty straightforward format before. What are they trying to cure by these changes? They're, they're doing it for TV. Um, they claim that because of time constraints, then they have to compress the competition. But I don't see where it's compressed because you're still doing six jumps anyway. Um, but yes, only three people are doing the final jump now as opposed to the full 12 or whatever number it is. But it, it, for me, it is unfair to somebody who is leading a competition only then to prove yourself again by jumping off against somebody who was always behind you in competition. It does make sense to me. Definitely, Leighton. Let's talk a bit now about Ghoul, who faded to fourth in that 800 meter earlier today. Um, I think I had a discussion with some people who like-minded individuals, put it that way. And they believe that this was a systems test for Natalia Gould. If you remember, she just came off a 156.44 run in Stockholm on July the 4th, which is her second best time ever, beyond, just behind her national record of 156.15. In this race, she had also Rosemary Almanza from Cuba, who won that race in Stockholm in 156.28. As you saw, Almanza finished ninth in 158.51, I think it was. But Natalia, I think, wanted to see how far she could push herself and how long she would last. And I think she would not necessarily be disappointed because 157.35 is her second best time this year. And it took the three women who ran better times than, than her today all ran personal bests. So they had to run personal bests to beat her when she actually ran through her system test. I think with three weeks to go before track and field starts, I think Natalia would be happy about where she is going, going into the Olympics, intending to run faster as well. Definitely, Leighton. And as you mentioned, the Olympics, you know, different performances from different, different athletes as they are at different stages, as you rightfully said. So we should not, you're saying to us that we should not read too much into these performances because come the Tokyo Olympics, we're going to be seeing a whole different performance. Yeah, basically. Um, a lot of athletes right now at this particular stage of the season are looking to fine-tune and looking to... Get, you know, when, when, you, when you train for a competition, you're pushing yourself to the limit in training to build up your strength. Huh? While you start to compete, you lose that strength because you, you, you don't want to get too bulky. You don't want to, to make those muscles too lactic intolerant for, for, for competition. So you're, you're not at your best. So when you're tapering towards competition, no, you are literally taking off all the load and allow yourself to run as freely or jump as far as possible without the constraints of, of exercise or training. 
So right now, the athletes, in, many of them are in the final microcycle before they prepare for the Olympics. But there are notable exceptions, like I mentioned before, Sean e. Miller, who's coming off an injury, who needs races to get race sharp. Yeah. So you know, her preparation is at a different level right now. Definitely. Well, Leighton, thanks again so much. And of course, we'll be chatting soon because so much has been happening in the world of track and field. Yeah, no, a lot more to come as well. Uh, you know, there is also the NACAC Championship for right. Jamaica doing well as well. Probably talk about that on Monday. Definitely. Stay safe. We'll talk again. Of course, Leighton Levy there, our senior writer at Sportsmax.tv. Now we take a break. But before that, we're giving you our feature Olympic Corner. that will run throughout the games. Without spectators, Japan is now all but deprived of its hopes for a games with pomp and public spectacle. The government and organizers had long seen the event as a chance to display the country's recovery from a devastating 2011 earthquake and nuclear crisis. The ban on spectators will also cost organizers hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. However, the IOC is hoping increased visual production from the Games, especially in Japan and its biggest market, the United States, will help limit the damage done by Thursday's decision. That's it for today's Olympic Corner. Do remember to watch the Sports Mag Zone for your daily Olympic updates.